Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday evening's Reflections on the Rock, May 4th. A dreary, kind of foggy, oh, chilly, dampy yeah. day. It's what we call a dreich day in Scotland. Oh. It's a great word, isn't it? Yeah. Dreich. Well, you have to be Scottish. You have to be Scottish to say yeah. it, that's right. Um, we're going to start with um, Precious Lord, mm. Take My Hand. Boy, do we need that. Oh, no, I tell you. Let's pray. Precious God, take our hands. Mm -hmm. Lead us on, help us stand. For so much around us is shaking and uncertain and unjust. In the darkness of these days, when we can't always see ahead of us, we pray for your light. Mm -hmm. But even if we have to walk through the darkness, hold our hands mm -hmm. so we can follow you. Amen. Amen. So our scripture is from Acts. We're going to have a whole series, yeah. you know, a couple of weeks worth of yeah, Acts. Great stories. Text. Great Acts. stories, yes. This is from uh, chapter 9 verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. Hmm. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs and since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. It's an odd place to end a story. I know, isn't it? And it doesn't go on to talk about Simon the Tanner. It's just a throw in there. And one of the things that really interested me about this text, and is going to interest me as I keep going here, um, is the importance of names. Oh. You think about how many times women are not yeah. named. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she gets two. Mm -hmm. she, gets, she gets them in two languages. Wow. She must have been a pretty fine woman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it starts out, and we'll talk a little bit about, more about names later, but um, it starts out as a story about Peter. Now remember, last Sunday, Anne's telling us, follow me, feed my sheep, mm -hmm. tend my lambs. Right. Peter gets a commission. He gets a job. Yeah. Well, um, here we find Peter... Um, 
acting out that commission. Mm -hmm. He's following in the sense that he is on some kind of a traveling preaching trip. Not what you would expect from a bumbling fisherman. Yes, right. And he's, um, and he's, um, he's, so he's following the, the other commandment to go and share the good news, the great commandment that all the disciples got. And he visits places where clearly other Christians or Jesus followers, because they weren't Christians yet, but Jesus followers um, um, have already been because he finds believers. Oh, already there. Already there. Yes. Right? And they're called in different places. People have already received the good news. Saints, believers, and disciples, all in this little story. And he has learned somehow or other <laughs> by the miracle, I think, of Pentecost probably, mm. or the resurrection, to listen. Yeah. He's learned a thing or two. Yeah. Um, he listens to needs as he goes. Um, and it's, again, that's also not what we expect from the early Peter that was so impetuous, you know, he'd jump into the water and think he could walk on water and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Action is what we expect. Um, and we do get that. We get both the listening and the action from Peter. Um, if you need to act, you need to listen to know what needs to be acted upon. And in this case, it's healing. But they don't tell him that. They just say, come and see us. Come right, over. Right. Come on over. Please come. And he hears maybe the urgency in that. He's not hearing the words alone. He's hearing something else that makes him say, okay, I'll right. go. Right. Now, this is not exactly feeding my sheep, but I don't think Jesus meant a literal right. shepherd exactly. work anyway. Um, but I think it, the lesson for me is that it means addressing the needs that come up in front of you. Yeah. You know, that, that they're right there. Um, and I think that's what following Jesus means. It means listening um, and acting to meet the needs um, of what's right in front of us. Whether we call ourselves saints or believers or disciples, we still have the same calling as mm -hmm. Dorcas mm -hmm. and Peter, although their um, very different ways of following were, were completely unique to them. Um, but nonetheless, following. I think in the great family of God, um, we are sometimes disciples um, who seek help for others, like those two men who went um, <coughs> oh, when when they me, can, sorry. you know, when, when they can't do something for themselves. We on others' behalf, and sometimes we are like um, disciples who are on the go and on the ball, listening and acting to address all the needs that are right in front of us and keeping us busy. Um, and clearly, like Peter and like Dorcas, who just saw a need for clothing or, or tender care and, and did it. Um, and sometimes we're people who are hurting mm -hmm. um, and grieving, like um, those friends of um, Dorcas's. The saints and the widows. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But in all of our life, wherever we are on the spiritual and developmental journey of faith, um, we are people who live out what we hear mm -hmm. when we're truly listening for God. Now, there are a lot of noises out there. Yes. There's a lot of voices out there. Um, the cacophony when my husband turns on the television in the morning for those talk shows or those news, so-called news shows, just sends me into a tailspin. I have to go into a quiet place and shut the door so that I can be listening for more real voices. And this week, um, I want to share, I want to read a little story um, that um, came out of my, this is one of my daily um, books at the moment. It's called The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. And um, on Monday, 
he told this little story. He says, kind of seeing what's in front of you and acting out mm. appropriately is sort of what it's about. Several years ago, while doing a poetry reading in New York City, I encountered an angry young man who had just seen a woman mugged. He was so enraged, he wrote a poem right on the spot. A pensive voice came from across the room and called out, yeah, it sure beats stopping the mugging. Mm. Ooh. Nepo goes on, I felt there was nothing left to say. The story points up painfully how living in our thoughts removes us from the very real journey of being alive. Mm, wow. To always analyze and problem solve or write poetry and observe and criticize what we encounter turns our brain into heavy calluses. Oh my goodness. Rather than opening us deeper into the mystery of living, the overtrained intellect becomes a buffer from experience. Wow. And, you know, I understand the young man. I, I, I'm not sure I'd go interfere in a woman being mugged either. Um, but this thing about seeing what's right in front of you mm -hmm. and doing something about it mm -hmm. um, is heavy on my heart this week, especially with all of the news um, both from Ukraine and from the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I have to listen carefully for what God wants because there's an awful lot of people telling me what God wants that I'm not convinced are right. So, um, so anyway, the thing to be is people who live out Mm -hmm. what they listen to right. and listen to the right things. Interesting, because um, Sunday's scripture reading is about listening to, or this, how the, the, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of listening images in mm -hmm. that as well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That was a great story. Yeah, it's kind of frightening mm -hmm. yeah mm. our um our prayer tonight the music under the prayer uh you know thinking of tabitha and her acts of charity is um live in charity um and it's a taze piece that just is a repetitive mm. thing that kind of washes over you so i'm gonna let kevin play it and then i'll read the lyrics with it but it is a just um uh, waves i guess of of um, yes. music and words. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. reminders to live in charity. Yes. And our prayer requests are embedded in the prayer. Mm -hmm. So let us pray. by your steadfast love, we too become healers and preachers and people who share your good news. And we rise up 
to accept the challenge and to pledge our love and support of Jesus' way. We lift to you our prayers for Kathy's friend Tal, who is improving in health. For Chris, as she continues to heal from hip surgery. We pray for the ministry and the mission of Covenant Table. And we celebrate the arrival of Henry William Allard to uh, Emily and Doug, born on May 2nd. God of love and grace, by your Spirit, move us into acts of kindness, mercy, and love, that we may, with confidence, pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, what's happening Friday? Oh, Revelation. Wow. Yeah, in my little summary, I talk about needing a Revelation for dummies. Oh, don't we? <laughs> oh, just, my gosh. It's, it's, it, it's And this it's one, if I remember, it, this one's really bizarre. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's a little, it, I think it's a little past bizarre. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to look at that and um, kind of interpret it. it, it we're going to interpret through music. Um, so we're going to look at that oh, great. on Friday. Mm. Oh, and the church work day, right? Saturday morning, uh, we're going to get together and clean up the churchyard and spruce it up. Um, we, we have leaves left from last fall, um, and there's just some real, we'll let our neighbors know that we really care about being here at this corner on Culver Road. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And again, an invitation to any of you who want to have a conversation with me about a favorite scripture that has been really particularly meaningful to you, um, just get in touch and um, we can come to you and record it or you can come to us and mm -hmm. we'll figure something out. You want to keep hearing from new voices. Yes, absolutely right. Um, it is wonderful when we feel that God's hand is upon us, mm -hmm. that anybody's healing hand is lifting us up. Um, I felt it this week as I was prayed for by many of you, and I thank you for that. Um, I have almost no energy, and what I've had is just about expended, and it will be gone after this postlude. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but thank you, because I know that prayer and um, all signs, darkest kinds of things, yeah. um, lift us up. And as Peter knelt by her bed and prayed, I'd be praying with him, lay your hands gently upon us.
and I would have loved to have had the words right in front of me, but we were sent to um, heal the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. to give sight to the blind, to do all of those Dorcas and Peter kinds of things. And we just need to have God lay gentle hands upon us and their touch render us peace. May peace be with you this night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night.